to load all of your reagents and consumables. Hopefully by this time, enough time has passed by for all of your 601 reagents that have been sitting out. Um, so you can go ahead and put those on. And then um, you're going to load your 501 reagents and make sure everything that you need to have on the instrument is on before you request your calibration in QC because you don't want to have, you know, put in a couple more reagents and of course you're going to have to QC them and they may have to be calibrated. So just make sure everything is on um, that you need it to. If your 45 minutes isn't up, just take a pause and just wait until it is and then we'll move on from this step. But let's just say that it's been 45 minutes and we reloaded everything. And so what we're going to do now is you're going to request your calibration in QC. Um, there is a tab for that there at the top. So you're going to touch calibration in QC select. You're going to touch routine QC, which selects all controls to run all of the active reagents on your analyzer. Once you do that, you're going to touch your standby bottle, which will select controls to run on all of your standby reagents. Then you're going to select QC load list and touch print, and that'll print out your list for you. And then um, you're going to touch the recommended button if it's in yellow. And as you can see in the picture, it is yellow. So we will go ahead and touch that and select calibration load list, touch print and close. And that'll print out another list for you. So you should have two sheets of paper, one of them for all of your controls that you need to make up that are ready to be put on. And then the second list is for your calibrations. And that'll show you all of your calibrators that you need to make up to put on. After we do all of that, we're going to go ahead and shut down the computer, um, which is just at your main screen. There's a shutdown button. Just go ahead and press that button. Um, it'll shut down the, com the computer, and then you'll um, look to your right, and there's a switch on the analyzer. You just flick that switch down, and it'll go ahead and shut off the analyzer. So then you will go on and perform all of your hands-on maintenance while the instrument um, and the computer both are powered off. So the first part of the 601 manual cleaning is you're going to go over and empty the 601 cis clean cups and replace them with new ones. Um, I know in the picture there you see two big cups. Um, my finger is actually pointing in the middle of them, pointing to the two little cups. And the two little cups are the ones you want to replace. Now that um, little white bar that's over those cups, you're going to lift that up. Once you lift that up, the cups are really easy to remove. And you'll go ahead and go over to where... Um, you make up the calibration and controls. Um, in that first drawer there, there are extra cups. And you'll set them in there and then press that um, the little white bar back down. And that locks them into place. And then you're, go, you're done with that. Next thing you want to do is clean your ProCell and clean cell reservoir fill nozzles with DI water. Um, as you can see, my finger there is pointing to one of them, and you'll see a little clear plastic tip that's on there, and you're going to have to unscrew that and pull it off. Um, you can go over to the DI water sink and just rinse them out, and then you'll have to screw it back on. Now, there are four of them, so what I recommend you do is do one at a time. That way, none of them get mixed up. Um, so it does take a little bit of time, but that's okay. And the next thing we do is we're going to clean your pre-clean mixer with the cotton swab moisten with DI water. And that is in the first picture there. And those are those two black circle looking things. Um, it's the easiest way I can describe it. So you're going to just clean those, um, gently wipe over them. And then your incubator is in the second um, picture there. And you can also use a cotton swab with DI water and just clean inside of each and every one of those little holes. Again, this is time consuming, but um, it is important that it gets done. And then the assay cup vortex mixer, you want to clean that with DI water, with the gauze, or um, a cotton tip applicator, whichever is easiest for you. And that is in the first picture there, and it's a little silver circle. And then the microbead mixer, you want to clean that with our paintbrush that we talked about in the, one of the first slides um, that we're using for dusting. So you're just going to gently go over that with your brush. Um, be very, very careful not to bend it, because if you bend it, that can cause a lot of issues, and we don't want that. Um, so just be very, very careful. The 601 has wrench stations as well, and you clean those similar to you to how you did them in the 501 side. Um, but the first part is a little bit different. So um, as I said, there are three of them, just like the other side. So um, you want to first clean the inside of them with the cotton swab, um, with alcohol, and then a cotton swab with DI water. So just make sure you clean in there really good. And then you're going to fill it with the 2% Echo D solution 
and then fill it again with your DI water to rinse them out. And the 50 mLs is just an approximate value. Don't worry um, if it's not exact. It's just to give you a general idea about how much you should be putting in there. Next, you're going to clean the um, sample probe with DI water and DI water only. Um, that is the only probe on the 601 side that we do not clean with alcohol. And just remember the sample probe is just DI water. And then the reagent probe um, is cleaned with alcohol and just swipe down that and follow that with DI water. Um, the sample probe is in the first picture and then the reagent probe is in the second picture. It's one with the green on the probe. So again, um, alcohol and then DI water for the reagent probe. The zipper probes and pre-wash zipper probes um, the zipper probes are in the first picture and the pre-wash zipper probes are in the second picture. And what you're going to do with both of them is you're going to do the same as for the reagent probe. You're going to clean it with alcohol and then follow it by DI water. After you are finished with that, you are finished with all of the manual cleaning for the 601 side and we are ready to power on our analyzer. So you're going to go over to the computer, click on the power, um, the power up button. And once you see the computer turning on, you can go ahead and flick the switch and turn on the analyzer. And this startup process takes about 12 minutes. And um, our chemistry supervisor has programmed this analyzer um, that once it's shut down, um, it will automatically go into the weekly pipe. And the weekly pipe takes about 70 minutes to complete. So you have plenty of time to get your um, calibrators and controls made up. So um, also, I don't think calibrators and controls will take that long to, to make up. Um, so just make sure that everyone in the lab kind of knows what we're doing and it's, hey, let you know it's weekly maintenance today. Um, so we're going to be a little bit longer than usual um, just to give everyone kind of a heads up. <clears throat> While that 70 minutes is going on, you can, as I said, um, start preparing your calibrators, start preparing your controls, um, get your green wash rack ready to go on. Remember that always has to go on first. Um, you can record your um, uh, photometer check. Um, that will be under your print view. Um, record that in our log that we do every day for our daily maintenance. Um, <clears throat> and once your green rack and your calibrators and controls are prepared, once the, daily, or the weekly pipe is finished, you can go ahead and press the start button and it'll go into preparation and then it will take all of your controls and calibrators on and it will begin running them and as they finish it'll print you off a sheet as you know and we check them off and um, deal with them as they come um, if there's any problems you know whether you have to rerun QC recalibrate things like that but all of that is done um, after after the weekly pipe is finished so I hope this presentation was informative and I hope that um, it made it a little bit easier than um, than what people were thinking it was going to be. I know weekly maintenance is always kind of dreaded, um, but it's really not that much more than any than our daily maintenance. It's, it's just a few extra steps. Um, the weekly pipe takes longer, but that's not really work for us. Um, so I really hope this, this gave you guys a better understanding on how to do it. I hope the pictures were helpful to you to show you what exactly to clean and how to clean them. So um, I wanna thank you all for taking the time to listen and I hope you all have a wonderful day.